It's time once again for your weekly installment of the Reserve List Top 10 Selling Cards this week from November 4th to the 10th of 2023. We will also be discussing the financial outlook for Reserve List cards and some general financial discussion about Reserve List buying. Unlike the last couple of weeks, this week, the market, it looks like it's a mess. Welcome back, everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. Uh, if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. But now let's talk about the reserve list because this week, unlike previous weeks, it doesn't look pretty, guys. It looks pretty ugly out there. The sales are lower. The volumes are lower. The card selling, we'll talk about that as we go through the actual top 10 cards because it is not what you would expect this time of year. Previous years, when I've been following the market, players, yeah, they're trying to find certain cards at a better price, but in this case, they want the best price. The players who are actually buying cards right now on the reserve list, anything mid-level, mid-tier, they want the best of the best. They wanna save so much money that anyone who's selling reserve list cards just can't fathom letting the card go that cheap but that's where we're at. And some of these cards are selling as low as that, depending on the condition of the card. We'll talk about that as we go through today's video. So hang in there. Let's go through the top 10. And of course, at the end of the top 10, when we get to number one, I'll do a little wrap up at the end and let you guys know a little bit more about what's going on. Coming in at number 10 this week from Weatherlight is Pendrel Miss. Now this card had 29 sales this week, but you can see the low total volume of only $252.59. This card is an extremely valuable card, but at a really rock bottom low price. I mean, nobody even cares about it at this point. This card only has an average price of $8.71, the market price of $8.83, and it's €7.10. It's only 12 bucks here in Canada for a near mint copy, and for something that gives every creature an upkeep cost, that is an insane power level card for less than 10 bucks. Just crazy. Now, number nine this week, this is Baron Senior from Homelands. I've seen this guy a few times inside of uh, Vampire Commander decks. 30 sales this week. Again, the total sales volume is only $165.90. His average price is only $5.53. The market price, $7.95. 3 euro 70 cent and here in Canada you're looking at around $10 Canadian for a guy who can regenerate vampires and gives himself plus two plus two counters when he damages stuff this card seems like an insanely powerful creature and again the casting cost is way out of whack with today's standards but if you can get him on the board and keep this guy alive in a vampire deck regeneration is just something players aren't used to having to deal with anymore it can add a little bit of uh, spicy variety to what you're trying to accomplish on the battlefield and again players have to deal with them sooner or later and when you do put them on the board he is a conversation piece at least the value is so low though i can see why players might be willing to spend the money to get them now when we're talking about our next card this is lake of the dead and of course this card comes in at the number eight spot with 32 sales this week and this card again still continues to fall in price with an average price of 72 dollars and 94 cents the market price is 72.50 49 euro 60 cent and around 100 bucks here in canada the total sales volume is $2,334. It's a good chunk of change, but not nearly as much as we used to see for cards like this. The artwork is purely iconic, amazing stuff. Like when we saw this in Alliances when we were kids, this stuff blew our mind. And the card itself is actually a highly utilized card. People do play with it. It adds one black to your mana pool, but you can sacrifice a swamp to add four to your mana pool. And of course, with all the ways we have of bringing land back now and ways of untapping lands, this card can be a purely sick, powerful piece of nostalgic history in the right build. But a lot of players just aren't buying it right now. They're ignoring it. They got tight wallets. They got other issues to worry about. And the Lake of the Dead is the last thing on their mind. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our next card. And this is Null Rod coming in this week to our number seven position with 35 sales. And of course, the total volume spent this is a little bit higher with $3,499. This card has been gaining some value and the sales are uptrending on this particular card. Average price is $99.99. That's a bit of a higher that we've seen the last little while. The market price is $79.49, 59 euro 78 cent. Here in Canada, it's actually around $130 Canadian. Now, 
from another card at Weather Light. And of course, these cards were super cheap for so long. Null Rod is one of the cards that's actually managed to retain some value. Players do use the card. It's, it's a too generic artifact that says players cannot play any artifact abilities requiring an activation cost. Depending on the build and what your opponents are facing, I mostly see this as a sideboard card. I don't see it as a mainstay all the time inside commander decks, although it has on occasion come up. Let's go ahead now and take a look at our number six card, and this is Thrall Champion, one of the cards of the channel. I love this card. We all know it, uh, and 37 sales was not caused by me. This card only has a price tag of $2.99. The market price is three thirty-eight. dollars 2 euro 85 cent, 5 bucks here in Canada. Of course, Thrills are one of my favorite creature types. Actually, it is my favorite creature type, followed by Slivers. But when I look at Thrill Champion, I see something amazing because all Thrills get plus one, plus one. You can take control of target Thrill and, of course, Changeling, Shapeshifters. There's all kinds of crazy ways of using this card and utilizing him. But for the most part, he's worthless. Nobody cares. He gets to sit there on the sideline and do absolutely nothing because Wizards has never gone further with this creature type. They've never really lent it the emphasis of power level. They've never modernized it. It is something they could touch base with later on though and make a real impact inside formats like Commander. So always keep your eye out for cards like this. Now our next card again refuses to die. It's hanging out again with us at number five this week and that is Fastbond. Now this was off the list I think two weeks ago. Last week it made its way back on and it's still here at 38 sales this week. A lot of the rumor mill was talking about this card being unbanned. I've seen arguments saying it never should be. I still argue it should be just because who cares? It's Commander, it's a casual format. Let players learn to deal with weird cards like this. Now, the average price, $26.97. The market price is $24.60. €15.95. $32 here in Canada for a near-mint copy, but an unlimited copy is only $110 for a near-mint. So I personally would just buy an unlimited copy and spend the big bucks because it's a lot rare. Now, this card had $1,024 in sales and $0.86. Cents. No, no huge amount, but $38 is still 38 and this card has gained value over the last several months. Now our next card is a bit of a different beast. Here we're talking about Wheel of Fortune. Now this may come in at the number four position this week and the total value spent is $11,319. This card has kind of stopped falling. I thought it was gonna fall sub 200. It seems to be hovering now. Average price is 282.99. The market price 266.51. 165 euro 92 cents here in Canada a heavily played copy is going to run you 250 bucks there were a few that were cheaper than that several months ago all that has dried up the people who now are selling this card they're not really budging on price so if you're looking for this card I don't think there's much choice other than to pay the price right now so you can hang in there and hope it goes lower but I just don't see it bottom out any lower at least at least in the current market state. Maybe in the new year we'll see some shifts, but right now, Wheel of Fortune that people wanna have, you're, you're gonna pay. Now this one comes out of nowhere, guys. I'm not sure who's buying this one. It's Yavamaya Hollow, 42 sales this week. Average price, 64.99, market price, 69.25. A foil, that's right, $541.59. 42 euro 35 cent but the total value spent $2730 this one kind of comes out of the blue it does tap for colorless but it doesn't come into play tapped and for one green and tapping the land it regenerates a target creature that can be your opponent's creatures this card I use in a few of my commander decks I've been working with just because it can be a total mess around card it can be a saving grace when you need it to be and with the price the way it is if I match this up against some creature type like Shieldred or Voren Clicks or, or any of those type of cards, I'd rather have the Yavamaya Hollow, but I'm partial to reserve list cards. And it's a land card with no drawbacks. So yeah, this kind of card attracts me. Don't know who's buying it, but it's interesting. Now our next card coming in is Sands of Time. And this is number two with 45 sales this week. Total volume though, look at that. $143.10. The card's $3.18. The market price is $3.13. 2 euro, 1 cent, 5 bucks here in Canada. So what do you get here? This is a forecasting cost artifact that says each player skips his or her untap phase. But at the beginning of each player's turn, untap each tapped artifact, creature, and land he or she controls and tap each untapped artifact creature. Or So it's kind of like every other turn. It really slows the game down, guys. I remember playing with this thing a long time ago. Sorry, playing against it a long time ago. It was just 
evil to have to deal with it. People used time elementals. They unsummoned it. It was a pain. But we've waited long enough now, okay? Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the number one card this week, and that is Scorched Ruins, okay, guys? This one comes in with 64 sales this week. Total volume spent $2,560. The average price, though, is only $40.46. The market price is $41.69. 24 euro to get that card. It's $60 here in Canada for a near mint copy. Now, Scorched Ruins does come into play. You gotta sacrifice two untapped lands or bury Scorched Ruins. It also says, Add four colorless mana to your mana pool. This card is an amazing piece of magic history, and it is downright devastating and used in Tron decks, Commander decks, looking for the Eldrazi. This thing is beast, but there's also ways of bringing this card back. Always keep that in mind. So as we wrap up here, guys, these were the top 10 selling cards, and all the other cards were much lower than that. Now let's do a little bit of a wrap up of what else is going on in the market space before we leave today's video. So here at the wrap up guys, I just want to follow through on a couple of things. Right now the market is very calm. Nobody cares because it's calm. The reserve list gets the most attention when cards get broken, blood in the water, something happens to a new printed card that causes a reserve list card to spike, a previously undervalued reserve list card. We saw it this year with River Song and Soul Devi Digger from Alliances, Amy Weber artwork, right? When Riversong said, hey, you're going to draw cards from the bottom of your library. And then Soul Devi Digger says you're going to put the top card of your, your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Which means you can utilize the same card over and over and over and over and over again. Basically guaranteeing a win depending on the combination of the type of build. Well, of course, what happened to Soul Devi Digger? When that card was announced and got spoiled, Riversong came out, everyone went nuts. And they bought so many copies they could get their hands on. Players were excited to try it out. And of course, speculators were there selling into that market. Because those players who had those cards and had bought them for 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar in the last year, were now selling into a market that was willing to pay 15, 20 bucks. That is when people talk about the reserve list. When something broken happens to some modern card mixing with a reserve list card that Wizards doesn't really care about anyway, because it's going to be played in a casual format, most likely, to Commander. So enjoy these moments where it's calm. Enjoy the moments where the market is like this and nobody cares about MTG Finance. There's no money to be made and no one has any clue what's going on because nobody has any good advice to offer you. Stay in your budget. Pay attention to cards you think could be utilized in a better way. Look at the future potential for that card and how it could become broken. And then decide for yourself if that card is worth buying at the price point you're seeing it for. Either way, it's a great time to be in Magic. It's a great time to have a talk with you guys about reserveless cards each and every week. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for hanging out on the channel. Have a great day and uh, always bring a friend to Magic. And of course, a big shout out and thank you to the amazing patrons I have on the channel supporting me each and every day, my YouTube membership members. Because of all these people supporting, daily content comes out every day, guys. Thanks again. Thanks for showing that support. Ramble Jamble time. Very interesting, isn't it? When you look at the market like that, and those low volumes, and people get to badmouth the reserve list, I say I get to do selective shopping. I say cards that used to be 20, 30, 40 bucks are now two or three dollars again. If I wanted to get four of something, I'm buying it now because it's super cheap. I don't care if it sells 100 copies. I don't want to disturb the market. I don't want the market to go up. I like. I like prices without inflation. I like prices without competition. I like prices without speculation. I feel like I'm winning. It feels like you're going to say that kind of in, in a flexy, bragging tone. I feel like I'm winning. I feel like I'm getting a good deal. I don't get to say that about my groceries or my gas or paying my taxes. But I do get to say it about reserve list cards. And for me, it feels pretty darn good right now. Thanks a lot for hanging out, guys. Thanks for being here. And you know what? You made it to the end of the Ramble Jamble. You, you came to the end. And that's pretty awesome too. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, this is the Sunday live stream, right? Yeah, we got a Sunday live stream tonight. Sweet. I'll see you guys in the live stream if you can make it. Live streaming.